Good morning, everyone. I'm sure a few people will start chiming in here soon enough. Uh, today, I've already forgotten to put it in. We are going to Philippians chapter 4, starting at verse 4 and following. Um, so that's what we're going to be today. We're going to talk a little bit about rejoicing in the Lord, even during times of trial. Philippians being the great book of, um, of rejoicing, joy. So again, we're going to go to Philippians chapter 4, uh, starting at verse 4. Kind of a shorter devotion today, just to kind of wrap up everything we've been through. I'm going to put that in my comment sec sections here. Um, through, we are going down to 9. There we go. All right. Good morning, Leanne and Shirley. Um, so yes... We are uh, going to go into the book of joy and talk a little bit about joy, even in the midst of hardship, as I was mentioning already. Uh, it's a kind of a dreary morning, uh, so it's kind of interesting. I have some light, so hopefully it's not going off too uh, too much behind my clock here and, and blinding everybody. I kind of see it, so I've been trying to keep my head over here. Uh, so we are going to Philippians uh, chapter 4. Let us begin. Paul writes, Rejoice in the Lord always. Again, I will say rejoice. Let your reasonableness be known to everyone. The Lord is at hand. Do not be anxious about anything, but in everything, by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known to God. And the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. Finally, brothers, whatever is true, whatever is honorable, whatever is just, whatever is pure, whatever is lovely, whatever is commendable, if there is any excellence, if there is anything worthy of praise, think about these things. What you have learned and received and heard and seen in me, practice these things, and the God of peace will be with you. Good morning, everyone. Uh, yeah, Connie, Joan, uh, uh, Wanda. I'm sorry, I need my reading glasses at this rate here. I swear I'm starting to get into that stage where I'm going to need new glasses. Um, so if I'm not seeing everybody on here, I'm, I am looking for you there. So here in Philippians chapter 4, um, rejoice in the Lord always. But sometimes I don't feel like rejoicing. So what's up with that? You know, as Christians, we do have so much to rejoice in each and every time, especially as we're here in the Easter season. We're remembering exactly what God has done to reconcile us and bring us back to his table. That beautiful and lovely uh, remembrance is the reason that we can rejoice at all times and in all places. Um, you know, it's interesting, a, a great person to go back and read, uh, a book that's been around for a long time, um, are the books that have been written, uh, bi biographical books that have been written by Corey Tim Boom, who of course was in a concentration camp, now a uh, Christian and in faith, has a very interesting perspective on life. Um, and there's some very great uh, kind of one-liners in her biography. Um, that really kind of make you stop and think that even in the midst of utter evil, tragedy, heartache, uh, and problems, there's much cause that we have to rejoice. And again, you know, sometimes we think, oh, well, Paul is, he's just an eternal optimist and he doesn't really have much going on. And well, you know, he's going through one of the worst persecutions, at least towards the end of his ministry, that's ever going to start. I personally believe he's probably executed under the reign of Emperor Nero. Um, and that's, he's not a nice guy. Uh, there'll be other emperors that are worse, but you remember, he's, he's saying, rejoice even in the midst of those things. And so we always have reason to rejoice and we always have reason to hope because hope has been given to us. You know, in the ancient world, um, they didn't really use the word hope, not a lot. You can, I, even right back here, I have all my Greek authors and the like, and hope is not a concept that most people have. And yet in Christianity, once the Christianity is unseen, hope becomes this huge thing that we actually have something to look forward to, that we have something that's beyond just death and Hades and the underworld. We have, uh, yes, death, but life everlasting. 
Let your reasonableness be known to everyone. The Lord is at hand. There's also this understanding in Paul's time, they really truly thought, and you can see it especially in Thessalonians, that Jesus was going to come back pretty immediately, pretty soon, even in their own lifetime, in their own generation. Obviously, that didn't happen. But they were always ready, always watching, always praying. They were even getting very concerned that maybe they had missed the boat. Maybe had Jesus had come back already. Um, and so there was always this kind of tension between the worldly powers and the spiritual stuff going on. Um, and Paul saying, calm down, let your reasonableness be known. Even in the midst of suffering, even in the midst of um, heartache and tragedy, let your reasonableness show forth. Um, our emotions can sway and change real easy. And we need to make sure that we, we, yes, we should be emotional at times and the like, but we need to remember that we don't want to be led around by them, especially to our detriment. So do not be anxious about anything. Again, that sounds so easy to write or say. I don't know if it's always easy to practice. But he does give you something else. Instead of being anxious, in everything by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, even giving thanks for the trials that we go through. Let your requests be made known to God. And the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. Um, you know, we have that hymn, take it to, uh, take it to the Lord in prayer. Um, sometimes we forget to do that. Another thing that, um, and I have to find it. I know Sarah has it somewhere around. It's probably packed away. It's a little clipping of a quote that uh, I think came from a church that we, uh, my vicarage congregation, Wheaton, Illinois. And the quote went like this. And here's something for you to think about. Most of us don't pray. We just rehearse our anxieties out loud. Most of us don't pray. We just rehearse our anxieties out loud. I know I'm guilty of that on multiple occasions. Are we asking for something? Are we seeking God's will and prayer in our readings and devotions? Or are we just being anxious? Um, being anxious before our Heavenly Father is not a bad thing because, he, of course, he knows that we already are anxious. But maybe use that next time that you're anxious and bringing things into prayer. What are you really doing? Are you asking for something? Are you seeking God to do something? Finally, brothers, whatever is true, whatever is honorable, whatever is just, whatever is pure, whatever is lovely, whatever is commendable, if there is any excellence, if there is anything worthy of praise, think about these things. We have a lot of things to focus our minds and our hearts on, even in the worst times um, that sometimes we forget about. Um, yes, of course, you can always look out at the weather, which has been all sorts of different things since we've moved here to Minnesota. Uh, but, you know, it uh, looks like we're going to get rain even right now. Um, but there's many things that we can think about. Unfortunately, I think, I can't always prove this, sometimes we are pulled around not just by our emotions, but by our phones, by our news, by our social media, uh, sometimes by our friends, um, to things that are not so honorable, not so just, not so lovely or pure or excellent or worthy of praise, as St. Paul says here. Um, but we're to think about the things that are. And this is where your own devotional life, your own personal prayers and all these things come into play, um, that there's a lot to think about. And most of all, you're going to find those in the Holy Scriptures. So, when it comes to anxiety, of course, we get the command, don't be anxious. Um, but he doesn't leave us just with the command and say, well, go do that. He gives us the tools. He gives us prayer. He gives us time for meditation upon not only his word, but how that word applies to things around us. Um, he also gives us, uh, you know, teachers, pastors to, to proclaim that word of God and to lead us through these times. He gives us the fellowship of saints, which that's what I find to be, I guess, the most insidious thing about this sheltering in place is it actually does take us away from that body of Christ and that, that togetherness, um, which, you know, Jesus says where two or three are gathered in my name. 
uh, where they people are together when you come together and you break bread. So we really miss a huge portion of our Christian faith not being able to come together, and I'm still trying to figure a way around that. I don't know exactly what that would be, because it seems like we are stuck at the moment with the powers that be. But um, there is, he does give us these things. He gives us the word. He gives us the sacraments. He gives us very tangible things that take us outside of our anxiety and worry and show us, no, Christ has still died. Christ has still given us his body and blood. Christ still lives and reigns, and these are all things given for you. So, you know, sometimes, and I know it's a lot easier said than done, especially if you suffer from kind of one of these anxiety disorders or depression disorders, um, anxiety can be one of those things that can be di difficult to deal with. And, and the, we have resources out there to help with uh, counselors and psychiatric care and the like, and it's good to seek those things. Sometimes we need that help. Um, but other times I think we just kind of start to dwell in our hearts a little bit too much. Um, and if we're going to do that, we should probably take Christ with us. We take Christ wherever we go. And so think about Philippians chapter 4 as your day goes on, as your week uh, weekend comes in. Um, there's a lot to learn about joy. There's a lot to learn about worry and anxiety and having joy even in the midst of worry and anxiety. Um, this is, you know, especially when you, you read the epistles, it's really good to have um, some fundamental understanding of who the people back then were, to understand their culture, their ways, and the like. And remember, Paul is going through a very intense time of persecution that's starting to kick off, um, especially once you get into his pastoral letters in First and Second Timothy. Nero is in reign, and he is going towards his death, Paul, that is. Um, and yet Paul still says we should pray for our leaders, that we should still... Uh, rejoice, that we should still uh, give thanks to God even in the midst of our suffering. And if he can say that in the midst of those times, I don't think it's just him, uh, you know, being very optimistic. Uh, he really means it. Um, so those are things to think about, some things to t take you through the week. Next week, we're going to begin a new theme. We'll just do uh, five days on that. Um, haven't quite figured out the exact theme. I'm kind of going between a few different ones. If you have a theme that you would like to see either next week or the week after, you know, shoot me a message or type it down here. I'll see what I can do about getting into it. Um, because sometimes there's a, good, a lot of material on things and sometimes there's only a little bit of material. And so I'll see what I, what I can do about mixing things in. Um, every now and then you get a request for something that there's not really any material and then you got to figure something out there too. Um, but with that being said, hope this has been helpful going through Job, the words of Jesus, some of the words of Paul here, uh, seeing some of these things for what they are, uh, remembering that God is in control in all things. Uh, remember, you know, another good exercise just to kind of finish out your weekend. If you have your catechism at home, uh, the first article uh, the fourth petition of the Lord's Prayer, uh, the introduction to the Lord's Prayer. These are all areas that we should remember that God indeed is in control, that he takes care of all things. Uh, I love that line in the fourth petition. Uh, he gives daily bread to everyone, even to all peop evil people. Um, God's still going to take care of things the way he's going to take care of them. We are just to take what he gives us to pray, praise, give thanks, and to receive his word and what he has revealed to us with thanksgiving. I know easier said than done, but again, we can only know what God has in store from what he has given us, and that's from the Holy Scriptures. And so that's where we as Christians, we especially as Lutherans, will continually to look, because at the end of the day, I just want to do what Jesus has told us to do. Um, at least that's kind of how I feel about it. And the only way I know that is through what the scriptures tell us. So we have lots more to study and, of course, tons of time in the future to study many different things. If you, as I said, if you ever have a, a theme for devotions that you want to go through, again, themes right now. Books of the Bible will do once we are able to kind of get some Bible studies and people together. Um, and there's, there's good ones that I have coming up for you. One of my favorite things to do is to teach. 
so we will we'll take some good time to go through some uh, really interesting things in the future. I can't wait to get started. I got my material already starting over here in my bag uh, for our first study. I just got to get people together for it. Um, so all in due time, uh, we will get there. All right, if you have any questions or prayer requests, you can type those down below. Uh, we are getting ready, of course, to go into the weekend, and then Monday we'll pick up again at 9, and uh, we'll start with a new theme. So I'll give a little bit of time because I'm going to drink some coffee now. This weather kind of keeps me tired. Well, not seeing anything, uh, let's go ahead and pray. I'll give you an update. Uh, the young man that I've been uh, working with via messages back and forth uh, from back from my my last uh, town that I was in, he, he's coming along slowly. Uh, it's going to be a long process, but continue to pray for faith and the Holy Spirit to work in this young man's life. Um, it is interesting to see how the world uh, so easily influences us and changes us. Uh, that's a whole study for us one day um, as members here of Trinity and Concordia. Uh, that's, 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 a, that's a study in and of itself that maybe we'll undertake one day. Um, but there's some, man, it's, it's kind of interesting watching some of this talked through. So let us go ahead and pray. Almighty and everlasting God, we give thanks to you for this day and we rejoice in the gifts that you have given us, especially for the fellowship of believers, your word, your sacraments, and all the things that make for our life. We ask that you be with all those in need. Please be with all the farmers that are in the fields and keep them and their equipment safe at this time. Be with the other drivers that are on the road, especially around them. Bring patience and peace to all that we would have a good planting season that would lead to an excellent harvest. We ask that you continue to be with those who are infected with this COVID-19. We ask that you be with those in our nearby communities, with the workers that have been infected down in the Spirit Lake area, with those in Worthington and Wyndham that have, have fallen ill with the disease. We ask that you be with those that are continuing to recover, those who mourn the loss of loved ones, be with the hands of the medical care teams that continue to care for them all. We also ask that you be with our leaders, our government officials. These are not easy times for anybody to go through, especially them. And we ask that you would give them wisdom and peace for the days ahead, that your will would be done for our good and their good. In Jesus' most holy name we pray. Amen. All right, you're more than welcome, Charles. Um, so again, we'll pick up Monday, 9 a.m., uh, new theme. We'll figure out what that is when we get there, uh, but I'll have something good for you all. Have a blessed day and enjoy, hopefully, hopefully,